we record this class and that, that'll go on this link for you to screencast for the class. All right. <coughs> Any questions about that? No. I usually on the first day of class, we'll do it anyway. Usually on the first day of class, just take a couple minutes. So if y'all have questions for me, these aren't questions about the class, but sort of like an interview thing. Did I do this before with y'all last semester? So if y'all want to ask me questions, it's like an interview. Yeah, Andrew? Why are you shaking the beard? Uh, <laughs> now we're getting to the real questions. Do you need a history support? Yeah, my, uh, my girls' kindergarten class, I got to They didn't even know who I was. And I, I came in, and they just all looked at me like they expected Mr. Chad. And I walked in, and they just all looked at me. And then this one little girl, and I was like, is that Mr. Chad? Uh, I don't know, and there, and my mom died like a year ago. I had started growing it shortly before she died. And I don't know, it was sort of like a morning weird, I think. Not that you're ever really, I don't know if anybody's mother has ever passed away, but. They say it takes years, but not that I'm done grieving. But I think, I don't know, it's a step away. Well, you look very different now. Yeah, I've had no beard for most of my life. It's like Wayne picked up three year beard. My wife, I think, is glad. She tries not to say anything about it because she doesn't want to say one way or the other. But uh, I think that she's glad that I don't have it anymore. <laughs> All right, another question? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, last semester, I think they had five or six A's, if I'm not mistaken. And just a couple that didn't pass. A few, three, three to four that didn't pass. Right? And everybody else went in between. But I'm okay giving all A's. Mary? Is it doctor or student? Doctor. No, no, that's, is that about the class? No, I didn't know what the class Okay, go ahead. Um, you said you got a book video on each class session? Yes. I don't remember. I'll try to remember every time. Well, I guess if you miss it with a doctor appointment, we can listen to the class. I don't require it. <coughs> I think it's good for you to come to class. People that make A's almost always come to class. But these are about the class. Yeah. Um, uh, with the, you, and the, you and your wife, we, um, I have actually class with you and class with your wife, if there's anything that we should call each one of you, because if y'all both happen to be in the thing and say, Dr. Young, I'm pretty sure both of you are going to look. Yeah, I don't know. You have to be able to, we haven't figured out a good, <coughs> good way to do that. Sorry. Let's call her Dr. Young. Hey, Dr. Young. No, the one for this class. Right. Not the is other it not a good looking one? <laughs> <laughs> then you'll both not look still. <laughs> Alright, one more. Not about the class. He's like, in, uh, you never get to ask these questions. Use this. <coughs> Andrew has the best questions. Huh? Did he? Yeah. Right, one more. Wait, not one question. Yeah, we're going to have to do this. No, no, I'm not talking. No. Did you enjoy grad school? I love grad school. Yeah, I got married and had a baby. I mean, I didn't have a baby, but I got married in grad school, so that was really nice. But grad school was really nice. I mean, I'm sure that you'll like it because you're a good student, and I was a pretty good student too. So like, I just sort of worked from eight to five, and you know, as an undergrad, it's not really that way. Maybe you're that way, but eight to five, and then I was off for the rest of the time, and lived in Austin, so it was really nice. So grad school. Was really it's a lot easier than undergrad, too. <coughs> then we got to travel a lot. We got to go to cool places. I mean, we went to California a lot and Hawaii a lot. My wife got to travel. Gosh, she went to Puerto Rico and Chile and uh, uh, she went to California a lot, Hawaii a lot. She went to Spain or somewhere. But that's in astronomy. There's telescopes all over the world. So. Yeah, like school, in grad school. Because they pay you to go to grad school. All right, well, let's get started. Um, you know, this first part is just going to be dealing sort of with basic ideas 
regard to charges. And you know, honestly, you've seen this in third grade, second grade maybe. Uh, so we don't spend a whole lot of time on it. But you will see some questions about it on the test. third grade where it's like are you smarter than a fifth grader with these private school fifth graders who are like no I mean my kid goes to a public school and they did charges and magnetic fields and stuff in second grade I think I remember doing very simple things like uh, there's a magnet in gold or a bell All right so if you've been in my class before you know this but uh, the, the workbook that you can get on Amazon it is this, which is just a note. So it's sort of meant for you to, to collect a few things and check. So it's a useful thing. It's not required, but I think it's very useful. All right. So we're going to be dealing with electric forces and fields. And we'll define what fields are. But just sort of first, we want to introduce charges. You know, we often experience the presence of charges, especially in weather like we're having now when it's very dry, because we'll, where, where are some places that we feel charges? Door. Right, so you feel it on your car door, that's a big one, especially if you have cloth seats, because you, you get out of your car, and as you're rubbing your butt on those cloth seats, you pick up charges on your body, and so your charge becomes, has an excess of charge, and then when you touch your door handle, it will uh, it'll shock you, right. Or we wear sweaters a lot in the, in the winter time, and as those sweaters rub against, they sort of get this excess of charge. <coughs> And when you touch metal things, then you shock yourself. So um, we experience things with a car door, for example. Where else do we experience charges? Balloon on your head. OK, a balloon on your head. We'll do that in a little bit. If you've ever done this. What's that? You were so concentrated when it's smoke. It's hard to blow up balloons. I used to smoke and it was really hard to blow up balloons. But now I feel like I've gotten better at it because I quit smoking. So you, if you rub your balloon on something wool, for example, it deposits electric charges onto the balloon. And you can, I don't have much here, but you can, I can actually feel it as it's pulling up the air. If you want to take a balloon on your way out, you can try that later. Uh, you can also, it's probably not going to work on these balls. We'll try it out. You can do it on the ceiling. No, that doesn't work. If you have some carpeted walls, you can make it stick to the walls. Some of our have carpeted walls. Where are some other ways we feel charges? That's how we used to make um, fake helium. We uh, pull a little of static charge on our hair and stick it to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd stay up for a good while, and then sometimes the charge would weaken, and it would just where it would be floating like halfway across, and it would slowly drop. Right. Is it charge on the wall chain? Uh, it must, yeah, but not very much. Yeah. I don't really talk about it. Yeah, it must drain. But I, I think that you sort of think of it as a sink of charge. That I mean, as you're holding it, charges are moving from your body onto the wall. And so it's like this infinite supply of charge. All right, what's another place we experience charges? I guess y'all don't do this. But like when you, uh, when you kiss somebody, I mean, none of y'all are, only a few of you are married. But when you're kissing, right? Um, then you can experience charges between two people. All right. When I was in high school, I went to a boarding school uh, in Mississippi, and I had a roommate, Chris Reeks. And it was a math and science school, and we stayed up late, really late at night to, to do homework. But Chris was like a really good student, and so he didn't do that. He went to bed at like 10 o'clock. But I remember one night I was up <coughs> at like midnight, and I saw him over there asleep in his bed, and I thought, hmm. I'm a little bored. What should I do? And so I started shuffling my feet 
on the uh, floor, and when you shuffle your feet, what does that do? Build up it builds up charges on your body, and then I walked over to him, and I didn't touch him, but I just sort of brought my finger real close to his ear, and it was so much of a, a an excess of charge that you could see the spark. I going to my finger to his ear, and he jumped. All right, so we experience the presence of charges a lot. Um, often these things don't work very well, but I said that they work best on dry days. Can anybody tell me why they work best on dry days? Because the humidity will start sapping some of the charge. It'll right. Around. Okay, because water in the atmosphere, as Scott says, saps away the charge or it takes away the charge. But why would water do that? Water is what type of molecule? It's polar, right? So uh, water is a polar molecule. that um, easily transfers charge, I'll say, or easily takes away charge. So if I have this balloon and I'm able to get charges onto it, uh, if it's sitting in a really humid room, the water around the balloon is going to take away that charge really quickly. Right? And so these things don't work so well on a humid day. Uh, when a material has excess positive or negative charges, it is said to be uh, electrically charged. All right, there are some properties of charge. As I said, this is from grade school, primary school, but let's just sort of go through it. Uh, <coughs> we have both positive and negative charges. Of course, the positives are due to an excess of, of protons, and the negatives are due to an excess of electrons. Uh, like charges repel. So if we have two positive charges here, they're going to feel forces in that direction, like charges repel. Or uh, if we had two negative charges, they would also repel one another. Uh, we'll see that in just a bit. Opposite charges attract. So if I have a positive charge and a negative charge, they're going to attract one another. Charge is conserved. <laughs> Means you can neither create nor destroy charge, but you can transfer charges from one object to another. But it's not going to create or, or destroy charges. Charge is conserved. Um, and then finally, I guess there is no sixth one, but finally, charge is quantized. Charge is quantized. Uh, what does that mean to be quantized? Okay, yeah, it is quantifiable, right? But quantized is a little bit different. Uh, quantized, or it comes in quanta. What does that mean to be quantized? Connor, you're about to say it, aren't you? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, it comes in discrete quantities, right? It, it's, it comes in discrete quantities, um, and those quantities are that a charge can be equal to uh, one e, plus or minus one e. I'll describe what this is in just a second. Plus or minus two e, plus or minus three e, plus or minus four e, and on and on. Uh, where e is the fundamental unit of charge. You go to the next page. The fundamental unit of charge, which is 1e, e, uh, has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And this is measured in coulombs, <coughs> which is, uh, it's the name of a person, so it's capitalized C. And the fundamental unit of charge is the uh, the charge 
or one proton or one electron. So it's the charge for a proton or electron. A proton has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and an electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 electron, uh, coulombs. So if I have a charge that is 2e, then uh, that charge is going to be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. All right. So the idea is that I have these charges that come in these discrete quanta because I can't have a half an electron or a half a proton. Now with that in mind, let's try this quick test problem. Which of these is not a valid charge? So I have four different charges here. One of them is not valid. Which one is it? Not everybody has their clicker today, right? I'll, I'll give you all till 40 seconds for this one. Five more seconds. No? It's not B. Let's try it again. Remember, these charges have to come in units of E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So it has to be an integer times that value. Which of these is not an integer times that value? <coughs> it's not B. You must have an answer before. Stop at 35. Five more seconds. Remember with these questions, you get credit for getting them right, you get half credit, but you also get credit for getting, getting them wrong. Yeah, it is B, that's right. <coughs> because 5.4 divided by 1.6 is 3.3 3 something. It's not a, an integer. Also just a quick disclaimer about these. So the way I set up those numbers that 0.25 points for each correct answer, 0.125 points for each incorrect answer. The way I set that up is I'd say that um, if you get, if you answer all the questions and only get half of them correct, then you'll max out your class participation. All right. So if you feel like you're getting them wrong a lot, you don't credit too much because uh, you only have to get half of them correct in order to get the max credit. And actually, even that is a little bit of a, an underestimate. So. You'll probably have some extra opportunities for uh, class participation credit as the semester goes along. All right? Okay. So the answer here is uh, B, because 5.4 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that's equal to like, what did you say, 3.3, Scott? 3.375. Okay, 3.3, we'll say. And you can't have 3.3 .3 protons or 3.3 .3 electrons. All right, 54, by the way, which is not the correct answer, but 54 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, is some really large number, right? Like 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 20th or something, which is an integer value. All right, now objects become transferred or becomes charged by what? Do they transfer protons or electrons? Yeah. Right, they transfer electrons. So objects become charged by transferring electrons, not protons. When we get into circuits, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, used to, people thought that protons moved. Whenever they talked about charges, they, they talked about positive charges moving. But now we know today that when objects become charged, they're actually transferring electrons, not protons. Why is that? Why are protons not transferred? Because if you tra transfer protons, you're changing an element, not just... Right, because you're... the farthest out. Right. The easiest to lose. Mm -hmm. your, your protons are really tightly bound. And as Scott said, if you, if you lose a proton, you're changing the element. So protons are really tightly bound.
this type of thing hasn't been known for that long. I mean, I, I know it doesn't seem like rocket science to you now, but it's only been a little over 100 years that we've known these things. At some point, they thought of her astronomy to spy on someplace in Spain. They pointed their telescopes up to 45 degrees because at some point they thought that the world was a big um, sphere, except all space was inside, all the stars and everything was inside. So to spy on another country, all you have to do is lift up your telescope to about 45 or some other degree, then you could see some other part of the, uh, and spy on the other side huh. of the world. Well, you can sort of like the telescopes because the the radio waves bounce off the atmosphere. Okay, so insulators and conductors. Uh, conductors, in conductors, electrons move freely. Uh, in response to other charges. Metals, almost all metals are good conductors. What's a really common conductor that we use? Copper. Copper, right. So copper is what we use in all of our houses and <coughs> wires and whatnot. Most wires that we have are copper. Gold. Uh, huh? Gold's a mm -hmm. But gold's really expensive. Really expensive. Right. Um, One of the richest people have gold, uh, gold in their homes. Uh huh. In our church, which the electrical system was really old from the early 1900s, it had a uh, <coughs> nickel wire. Somebody might know. What did they use before copper? They might know. It was aluminum. Yes, it was aluminum. And they also they weren't sheathed. Like they didn't have insulators around them. They were just bare wires up in the attic, and they had these little glass uh, balls or whatever that they connected to on the frame of the, the inside of the building. It was a little scary. The electrician came and was like, this, this place is going to burn down any day. But it did that way for like 100 years. Um, okay, so insulators. The electrons do not move freely. They're tightly bound to the, uh, to the atom. What are some good examples of insulators? Wood, right. Wood, rubber, fiberglass. A number of others. Uh, electrical insulators are also usually really good thermal insulators for similar reasons. That the energy is transferred through the electrons, and if the electrons don't move very readily, then that energy is not going to be transferred very readily. So that's true for electricity, but it's generally true also for thermal energy. That's part of the we were shown like uh, what the power lines do, mm -hmm. and it was they had this fake power line, just a small section about halfway across this room mm -hmm. that's just strung across the big apparatus room, and they got this uh, pole that they're using rubber boots and rubber things, and they uh, touched it, and they made and they pulled it back, and made this huge crazy arc, and you know those testicles where you see it and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. You never really hear the noise that comes with it. It's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so we're going to do a few sort of thought experiments about charges. Um, if one area of a conductor is charged, The charge distributes itself across the entire surface. So if I have a conducting <coughs> sphere like right here, and I dump a bunch of charges onto the sphere, then these charges are going to distribute all around the sphere. Uh, equidistant from one another. So I have six charges there, so it's going to look like this. And that's only on a conductor because the charges move really easily, and so they're, they're going to move around onto the conducting sphere. And actually this isn't entirely true. I'm treating this as a, as a circle, but actually what's going to happen is if I have this sphere 
that the charges are actually going to be distributed within the sphere. You understand what I mean? They'll be evenly distributed all throughout the object. Whereas on an insulator, if an insulator becomes charged, and you can charge an insulator, right? Like the balloon is an insulator, but I can still charge it. I can deposit charges onto the surface of the balloon. Uh, this is going to happen. What's going to happen to the charges? Still right, they'll just stay where they are. So on an insulator, because the charges don't move around very readily, they're just going to stay right where they are. <coughs> there are two ways that you can charge. You can charge by conduction or you can charge by induction. So an example of charging by conduction, if I have a conductor here that's charged, I have an excess of negative charges in this case, and then I bring it up next to a a neutral conductor, you're going to get a system that's set up like this. You'll get a, I have positive and negative charges on this neutral conductor, but when I bring this charge conductor up to it, it looks like this. I get a, an excess of positive charges over here and an excess of negative charges over here. All right, because these uh, negative charges come up and they repel the negative charges that are here, and they go over to this side of the sphere. <coughs> Follow me on this? Yeah. Then, if I touch it, all these negative charges will go onto the sphere. So I have these positive charges here, negative charges over here, and then these negative <coughs> charges all go onto the positive charges that are there. <coughs> and then if I take away that conductor, now I have a net negative, negatively charged sphere. And that's called charging by conduction. Conduction just means to touch. You can also charge by induction, which is similar but a little bit different. Y'all okay with this? I'm kind of going through this fast, but I think you've all had this before, more or less. We'll see some questions in just a bit, or maybe next time. Um, <clears throat> Let's say we're charging by induction. I have a conductor here that is uh, neutrally charged. So I have equal numbers of positive and negative charges. And then I bring next to it a negatively charged <coughs> object. I bring next to it this negatively charged object. And it sets up this distribution of charges on the conductor like this, just like we had before. All right, if I keep that and I hook up a ground, this is called a ground wire. We'll see that when we get into circuits, the purpose of it. But a ground wire basically acts as a wire to the Earth's surface, or to the, the Earth, which is like this big sink for charges where we can drain charges into it. Um, what happens there is that these <coughs> negative charges will travel down into the earth, into this big sink. And then I'm left with what type of charge on this sphere? Negative or positive? I'm left with a positive charge. Like that. That's called by charge by conduction, I mean charge by induction. And how is it different from the conduction? There's, contact. Right. There's no contact between the two charged objects. Okay. So it's called charge by induction. Let's try a couple little questions here. I have this figure, a ball made of conducting material. It's attracted to a positively charged rod. What is the charge of the ball? This is a conducting material. It's attracted to a positively charged rod. What is the charge of the ball? Correct? 
B is not correct. Try it again. <coughs> B is not correct. <coughs> I'll stop at 20. All right, C is correct. B is sort of the obvious right answer, right? But it's, oh, yeah. Okay. If it was negatively charged, they would be attracted, right? But it doesn't have to be negatively charged because it is a conducting material, right? And because it's a conducting material, you can get a distribution of charges set up on this ball. So it's going to look like this. I will have uh, negative charges over here and positive charges over here. And so it's going to cause it to attract. We can do a similar thing here. I have a, just a piece of copper wire. So this is a conductor. And I have a rubber rod. can rub it with this wool sock and deposit these electrons onto it. And then is the rod, is it, uh, how is it charged? Positive, negative, or neutral charge? It's neutral charge. It's been sitting out. I can touch it. If there's any charges on it, then now it's on. Uh, so I have a neutrally charged rod. And when I bring this negatively charged rubber rod to it, it'll be attracted for a similar reason. Because I set up this, I have negative charges here. When I bring it up close, I get positive charges here. I'll come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> oh, okay, let's get there again. So you get an attraction between it, even though it's a. Uh, <laughs> this one's pretty fast this morning, actually. Bring it back around. Right. So it's a neutrally charged object, but it still experiences these attractive forces because of this charge by induction and sets up this distribution of charge. Okay? Next time, we're going to have a couple more things about this, and we'll do a few questions on the clicker questions. Those are in the back of your book. And then we're going to go into vectors. We did vectors last time, so you're going to see a lot of vectors in these first couple of chapters. So I'll have a quick review of vectors. Okay? So that means you can put enough times to have uh, probably a negative charge. Yeah, if you touch it, it will charge it over like that. Right. I'll show you the video later. All right, y'all have a great day. Okay, I'll see you uh, Friday. Oh, and you are having lab tomorrow. If you're in the Thursday morning lab, you will have a lab uh, that will take most of the time. So go expecting to be there. Yes, we get to meet you once. Right. She's teaching all the labs this semester. <coughs> Hi, Brittany. Tell Holly that we missed her. What's her major now? Oh, really? She was a good chemistry. And she doesn't want you to tell anybody. Like, any can tell you. Oh, they're going to find out. Yeah. I'm going to record somebody's class. If I can get with me, I got to meet. I can't get up.